Hey guys, Snap here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a studio DJ mix and what the difference between that is and a regular mix. Basically, it's like a produced mix. So we use Ableton Live, which is a digital audio workstation, kind of like FL Studio, to create the mix rather than mix it live. You might say that's cheating, but to be honest, at the end of the day, who's going to know? Who cares? As long as you're not trying to show off your lead DJ skills, it doesn't matter. The end product is the same or better. Right, so let's get started. This here, what you're looking at, is what happens when you start a new project. So we've got audio and MIDI. This is the live performance mode, I believe. So what we want to do is go up here and click to change it to timeline mode. Get rid of the help thing as well, because we don't need that. We don't need help. Who do you think we are? Right, so we've got an audio track and a MIDI track. We don't want the MIDI. We do not need that for this. Let's get rid of that. And now on your DJ mixers, you'll have the three band EQ, right? Now we can replicate that in Ableton Live. So if you see this thing here on the left, this is all your plugins and whatnot and songs. So what we want to do is click this one here. It's the second to top one. And that is Ableton's built in effect. So what we want to do is we want to put the EQ3, which emulates that three band EQ on the DJ mixers onto the channel. You can just double click. I'm going to drag it across. We need that on every channel, basically. So I think normally mixes, you know, 15 to 20 tracks, but it's a tutorial, we only need about five. So what I'm going to do, hold down control and press D to duplicate the entire channel. We'll do that five times. You can also right click and just press duplicate here. But yeah, so now that we've got the setup all sorted, what we'll do, we'll start putting together a mix. So normally I arrange my tracks beforehand in uh, iTunes. I'll just make a playlist, put together a bunch of tunes I want in the mix. Um, not all of them will go in usually, but whatever. It's good to have more than you need. So what we'll put in now is this one here, Old School New Starts from my new EP. Go and check it out. I'll put a link in the description. You can see I've already time stretched this one a little bit to snap it to the BPM, but for some reason it's reading incorrectly, so I don't, it must not have saved my changes. So what we do, usually it'll try and detect the BPM and it'll put a load of these little markers all over the place. Now with electronic music, you don't really need them on every single beat because the beat's consistent normally, so we won't talk about... Um, stretching, I mean, other than for electronic music. So what we'll do, we go along to the first beat in the track, which is there, you can see. So we'll just play that really quick. So it's just a, a, like a clap or a snare hit. So we double click there, right at the beginning, and we want to get rid of any markers beforehand. So click on that marker there to the left, press delete. All right, so now we've got our marker lined up with the first beat in the track we want to go warp from here straight. And you can see it's done a better job of detecting the BPM. I think that's half or near enough half of what the track actually is. I know this track is in 148 BPM as it's meant to be based on like, you know, 2005 to 2010 kind of hard style. A lot of it was 148. There's actually a tool you can use online called tap for beats per minute. So if you just search BPM counter on Google, it'll allow you to tap in a BPM and you can get the value like that. There's many ways of calculating BPM, but uh, that's one way I can't show you right now just due to the way I've got it set up. It's capturing the actual Ableton window and not my monitor. For some reason, I can't do it any other way. So you'll have to bear with me there. I'll put a link to it anyway in the description. It's pretty self-explanatory when you see it. All right, so we've already warped it straight. It's not 74 BPM, that's half. So what we do, click in there, say BPM, Change it to 148. Boom. Now it's the correct beats per minute. And what we have here is like the time stretching algorithm. Beats, it doesn't sound great. It skips a lot. The best one, in my opinion, for this purpose is just Complex Pro. Just change all of them to Complex Pro down here. As you can see here, we've got a whole load of stuff. We don't need most of it. This here is um, the channel volume, which we will be using later. Right, so. We've got our one track in. 
Now, let's give it a quick play. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Why is that playing so slowly? That is because we have not set the project BPM, which you can find up here. So what we need to do, we'll change that. This track's 148, but most hard style is actually 150. So we're going to go and change that to 150. Just type it right in. Now let's give it a play. Let's see what it sounds like. That's more like it. But do we really want to start a mix off with some glitchy vocals and a couple of percussion instruments? I don't think so. It needs to have that immediate impact. So what we're going to do, we're going to find a good point at the beginning of this track where to bring it in at the start of the mix. So let's go here to the end of the intro. Like, 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 like the old school, old school, old school. So we can do... This is where sort of the build up to the mid intro starts. That would sound okay, but I think it's got obviously the echo effect from, you know, the vocal sample. So we can try and get a little bit of that in as well. Let's see how that sounds. That's not bad. It doesn't start on the one though. But it does that doesn't matter so much in the intro. We can like the old school. Yeah, to be honest. I think that's the best we're going to get from this particular track. So let's do that. Right click, split, get rid of this segment. We don't want it. Boom. So now we drag this all the way back down here. And let's zoom in really quickly just to see if the beats are. Yeah, that's close enough. I mean,. Normally you want the beats lined up exactly. You see these numbers here? We want them lined up exactly with that. For some reason, it's not quite doing it. Probably the way I set the initial marker was not uh, perfect. It doesn't matter that much. You can, you can easily adjust other tracks when you're mixing. So all right, let's drag this all the way out because for some reason it shortened it. All you have to do is right click and drag. It's really, really intuitive. Right, so now we've got our track. First track. You notice down here, it's over six minutes long. That's a little bit too long, in my opinion. I mean, I know I wrote it like that, but <laughs> for a mix like this, you want to grab people's attention. So we'll probably mix in over the climax section like the drop as it's called these days right so that is where we're going to mix in over this little section here you might have noticed one thing there though i don't know if you would have been able to hear it on your um speakers or whatever but it's clipping a little bit That might be my shoddy mix down. But anyway, it's usually a good idea to bring the volume down a little bit anyway. As you can see here, look on the right here where the cursor is. Right, that's the volume level. It's peaking way above zero. I don't know why it actually does that in Ableton because this doesn't peak above zero in the mix down. But whatever. Anyway, what we do, go down here, drag this down. I like to get it around, hovering just around the little, the zero mark, so bubbling over a little bit, but that's fine, that's fine. Okay, right, so I think now we're ready to go on, mix our first track in. As this is an old school sounding track, I'm going to pick one from that era to mix into it. We're going to go with D-Block and Estefan track, Evolutions. As this kind of track that, that I made um, was quite inspired by their old stuff, so it's only fitting. Right, so same thing. Look at this, this is what I was talking about before. It's put all these markers onto every beat, um, but we don't need that because the beats are all steady anyway. If it was like a live drummer or something, you'd want that and you'd want to drag them all onto the, um, like the little grid here and it'd snap it to the BPM, but 
we don't actually need it here because it's all steady. Right, so right click again, warp straight, it's got it completely wrong, it's 148 again. We need Complex Pro again. Let's quickly check in the loudest parts of this track um, how loud it is. So. You know what? That's actually not too bad. We're going to bring it down to a tiny little bit, but that's my track's actually louder than that, surprisingly. Um, right, so now we line them up. This is where your DJ knowledge comes in. It's the same as if you were mixing, you know, live. You need to match the beats, you need to match the phrases. So let's do it. We can do it visually here, though, which is a big plus. Um, right, so let's see. On the climax of my track, we've got this bit here. Wrong track solo. And like I just played there, we've got that like kind of half length mini breakdown, so it won't line up exactly with the climax that it, it cuts off halfway. So what we want to do, we want to put it sort of halfway between there, then we'll go in precisely afterwards. We'll find where the second section of the first part of the drop comes in. Uh, let's do that now. Keep soloing the wrong track. Right. Okay, so we found it, it's there where you can hear the crash come in. So I think that was this beat. Um, let's, that's all lined up. In theory, I might have got it off. We'll uh, give that a quick go now, play at the end. Yep, that's perfectly lined up on beat but you might have noticed it was distorting that's not what we want so what we're going to do click on the second audio channel which was the second track click here it should be on non we go to eq3 which is your three band equalizer what we're going to do we're just going to take this down and after that was after selecting gain low by the way you can go high mid low and there's some other stuff down here we don't need to worry about so what we do, select gain low, then you can drag this around. Drag it all the way down so there's no bass whatsoever. Let's give that a play now. All right, so that's good. We don't want that track continuing though so what we do as if you were bringing the volume down on a mixer go up here go to mixer go to track volume and then mm, I like to leave that bit in I think we'll cut it here bring it down then just before the like the mid outro bit comes in bang drop it right down let's give that a listen now It's not bad, not bad. But what we really want to do is we want to bring the bass back in on the Evolutions track. So select Gain Low again, it's probably still selected. And this is the bit we want here, but we're going to gradually bring it back up because this bit's pretty quiet anyway. So it'll just make it a bit more natural and smooth transition because you don't instantly smash the bass up by hand, do you? 
We don't really need to bring it out on that because we're cutting the track here and the bass comes in in a quiet part of the first track. So we'll leave it like that. Let's give that a listen. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. The only thing is... You can hear that. You can hear that pretty clearly. We don't really want that. In fact, this stuff here, we don't need at all. So let's just get rid of it. Drag all the way. We'll leave that little quiet bit in. It's sort of a build up. Um, get rid of that beat. Okay, there we go. So what we'll do, we'll start it off, say like minus five dB. And we'll have this as a little build up. It doesn't make that much difference doing that. I just like doing it. It sounds a little bit smoother. It, if people are really paying attention, they more than likely wouldn't notice. But either way, right. So now we've got that one point here. I don't think I talked about creating these points, by the way. It is really straightforward. You literally just have to click on the line. Right, so. Yeah, that's much more subtle. But obviously we want it to come back up. Although we don't really need this track to actually come through in the mix that much until the very end where it drops there. But there are some elements that I'd like to capture, so. Hang on, let's solo it. See, so yeah, I'd like that. I'd like that uh, little vocal bit to come through so we can bring it up bring up to about minus one until there and this this what will happen is the volume will gradually increase when that vocal bit hits you should be able to hear it fairly clearly you can actually do more with that as well you can bring the bass up for that portion only it just makes it sound a bit fuller so what we do create two points after selecting the eq3 and gain low Go up here, drag it up to, for some reason you can never get it on zero. So, oh, actually, if you hold down control, you can make fine adjustments and get it to zero. So there we go. I've just learned that just now. Always learning. Anyway, right, so do the same here. Get that up to zero dB. And then we drop it back down again before the beat comes in. So that's just captured the base of that little vocal snippet. It won't make much difference, but it's the subtle things like this that uh, can really make a mix great. There you go. In fact, that's not loud enough. I should bring it all the way up to zero. Boom. Ah, this is probably the perfectionist in me talking, but the sort of the echo from the sample in the first track just sort of cuts out. I don't, I don't like the way that sounds. So what we're going to do? I'll show you a little trick. A lot of the time, in tracks, the very, very end will basically be the same as the end of a phrase. So listen to this. Doesn't that sound identical to what we had before at the end of the climax? If you said yes, you'd be correct. The difference being, there's nothing after it, so we can let that uh, echo trail go for as long as we like. So what we do, cut this out. Let's get that. Right, so we can't split anymore for some reason. So just drag it. Mm, control X, copy. Where are we? Here we go. 
that's what we're going to do. We'll put it down here just for now. So we're lining that up where, with where it says it before. This is one of the downsides to um, not having it snapped properly to the grid. It's harder to align stuff, but apart from that, it doesn't really make much difference. Okay, so here we go. See, that sounds a little bit jarring. So what we can do... Yeah, we don't need you anymore. We can drag the first sample over a little bit. So we just get the trail, the echo trail. Let's have a go. Flawless. Drag that out infinitely. Boom. There we go. So you get that reverb and delay trail from the, um, what do you call it, the crash symbol and the vocal snippet. All right. So that's pretty much done. Let's have a quick listen. Alright guys, so we're going to end part one there. Stay tuned, I've got a lot more tricks to show you. But that is the basics, like you could actually make a mix just with these techniques. But I want to show you some other stuff as well. So stay tuned. <laughs>